Welcome to the Furman Woods Contemporary Art Podcast, guest curated and presented by Subterra. In search of solace in this precarious world, we emerge from ocular darkness. Rays of light pierce through the nocturnal, and in these twinkling soundscapes, we are reminded that we are part of something greater than ourselves. As we navigate these curious and luminous spaces, we will explore artist talks, discussions, and original commissioned sound art. everyone and welcome back to a new season of the podcast. This season our chthonic cosmonauts are emerging from their dark subterranean world to venture forth into love and light. Love and Light will see a new program of light-based artistic interventions addressing the climate crisis by fostering awareness, inspiring action, and cultivating a deeper connection with the earth and its inhabitants to promote solace in the sense that we are part of something greater than ourselves. Our first episode of the season will feature Pale Blue Dot Collective with their piece called Of Immeasurable Consequence. Pale Blue Dot Collective, made up of artists Louise Beer and John Hooper, spent four months in residency with Furman Woods to create Of Immeasurable Consequence, an immersive photographic and sound-based installation installed in All Saints Church in Aldwinkle. The exhibition ran from the 24th of March to the 7th of April 2024. In this version of Of Immeasurable Consequence, which has been adapted to include parts of recorded conversation, Pale Blue Dot Collective examine our place within the universe, framing the impact of the climate emergency through the eyes of evolution and the immense time period it has taken for each form of life to arrive at this point. Without further ado, here is Of Immeasurable Consequence, with a short introduction from John. This is our sound piece created for Of Immeasurable Consequence. We use sound recorded during our residency with Furman Woods and sound from our archives from around the world. Underneath the dark skies above and through our human eyes, we observe the light of galaxies and stars, ancient light falling softly on our retinas. In the darkness, animals rustle through fallen leaves, waves crash around the coastlines of vast land masses, and tectonic plates grind and shift the lithosphere. Insects make their homes in narrow crevices, and great aquatic creatures meander through deep blue seas. In the darkness of the forest, one owl calls to another as starlight reflects from the moon onto the heaving trees below. In the great expanse of darkness, Jupiter's gravity catches occasional earthly-bound comets 
and the moon pulls the oceans, creating tides. To be in the presence of this life, from the depths of the oceans to the upper atmospheric winds, is the consequence of a 13.8 billion year concatenation of events. Through the darkness, we can begin to see the cosmic significance of life on Earth. Deep time is a way of looking at long periods of time, such as geologic and cosmic time periods, millions and billions of years. It is a way of framing our brief existence into that of the long history and future of our universe. It helps us to see things on Earth and in space as ever-changing, however slow that might be. The speed of the effects of the climate crisis is even more alarming in contrast to the long and slow development of Earth's environments.
Our installation of immeasurable consequence intended for the audience to feel a sense of reverence for our own wonderful planet and to make their own connection between this feeling and the severity and the significance of the climate crisis. We find power of light in dark and quiet skies as starlight connects us to the bigger picture, whether that is during the day or at night, and Earth's place within the universe. Placing Earth in the wider context of the universe can bring us all together in the way that astronauts have discussed in Frank White's book, The Overview Effect. As we lose our access to dark skies through light pollution, we can lose connection to each other and to the miraculous nature of each and every species that we share our pale blue dot with.
When I look up into the night sky, I am embraced by a deep sense of calm. And for what feels like a brief glimpse, I can gain an appreciation for the magnitude of the firmament above. For that moment, I recognize that I am but an iridescent speck, and the worries that have been plaguing my mind are not as huge as they maybe once seemed. But sadly, looking up at the night sky is not something I do very often. So much of the work that we do, we try and look through telescopes or microscopes or, and try and see things in, through different lenses and also through sound as well. And that's really like a, it feels like a secret soundscape. It's really nice to think about a kind of appreciation for this kind of imbued sense of mystery in life itself and in time. And maybe the dark is a place where we can embrace such mystery or such enigma without this constant search for clarity, which so much of modern life feels like it's predicated towards clarity with everything, predictability, routine. So I really enjoyed that side of the work that felt like it was just kind of basking in this appreciation of both light and dark and the role that both needs to play as well.
We spent like a week walking around a very quiet forest in this ancient forest and realised that because of the bushfires in 2019, lots and lots of the birds and insects had not returned after that time. And that was one of the most immeasurable consequences that either of us have experienced. And it was really devastating, but really important. Using different microphones helps you go from that giant scale of earth and space and climate change and weather to the individuals who are coping, trying to cope in the environment that we've made for them. For me personally, when I feel overwhelmed by the future of Earth and the current situation, if I just spend time sort of observing one pigeon or insect or anything, it just makes me so inspired to do the best that I can to share this knowledge of, or like fairly obvious, point that Earth is really special.
It's just like listening through different microphones. It's like looking through a telescope, I think. It really feels like listening in on a, a secret world that you're like this big, giant intruder. That's what strikes me is this kind of conversation around, you know, the dark sky, the, the sky, the sun, and then narrowing down so you're so small that you're just inside the tree hearing the vibrations, you know, from the contact mic. And it's a really lovely relationship that those two things have. It's really clearly reflected in language. So many words for how we see things, but very few for how we hear things or how we can describe sound. So it is a kind of still and enigma, I suppose.
just think that's so beautiful that there's been such an amazing soundscape for so much of Earth's life, though not all of Earth's life, because at one point no species use sound to communicate, so which is just totally blows my mind. Earth has always had this beautiful soundtrack, and obviously before animals made noises, there was the noise of the elements as well. You can find more from Pale Blue Dot Collective at their website, www.palebluedotcollective.org, and at their Instagram, at palebluedotcollective. There are links to all of this in the episode description. Accompanying images for this episode are at our website. Listeners on Spotify are also able to experience an accompanying video to this episode by artist Sapphire Goss. And for listeners on other platforms, you can find Sapphire's work on our website. All of this will also be included in the episode description. Sapphire Goss is an artist who works with moving image, photography, and other lens-based methods. Using obsolete technologies, she creates chimerical imagery using unexpected materials, looping and processing to make an analog uncanny. Grainy, shimmering, otherworldly, bursts of light and emotion that are moving and mysterious. Thank you for listening to the Furman Woods Contemporary Art Podcast. If you enjoy our podcast, please make sure to positively rate, review, and subscribe. It helps other people find the podcast, and it makes us feel good about ourselves. This episode has been curated by Subterra, presented by me, Marie Chantal Hamrock, and edited by Astrid Bjorklund. Love and Light is Furman Woods Contemporary Art's new thematic program. This episode has been funded by Northamptonshire Community Foundation's Creative Climate Action Fund. Visit FurmanWoods.org for more information on this program and to sign up to our monthly email newsletter. Follow us at Furman Woods on X or Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. And make sure to check out myself and Astrid as Subterra at Subterrestrials on Instagram. Thank you for listening. With love and light, Subterra.